Welcome, beloved, to this service on the Feast of Christ the King. We continue our worship singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns. It's on page one of our worship booklets. Or if you have a hymnal at home, it's hymn number 494.
welcome to our worship this week. Today is the Feast of Christ the King, and we worship our Lord Jesus as our gracious and as our gentle Lord. We continue now on page one in our worship booklets, or if you have a book of common prayer, we're on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. 
and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a king, a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Our gradual hymn, 382, King of Glory, King of Peace. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another, 
as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, When was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be with us. Be with us, Lord Jesus, as you were with your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of bread. Amen. Feast of Christ the King, Jesus our Lord and our leader, the one whom we follow, the one who saves us and rescues us and sets us free. Our Gospel reading today from Matthew. If you are like me, you're sort of conflicted about this reading. On the one hand, I really love this reading. Parts of it are tender, and it's certainly uh, a, timely, a timely call for all of us. On the one hand, I love this reading, but if I'm honest, on the other hand, I absolutely loathe this reading. Let's start with the, uh, with the positive first. Why do I love this reading? Well, I think in many ways because it makes everything pretty simple. Uh, It puts everything nice and neatly into uh, distinct boxes, and there's a shelf for each box, and it is is done, and I don't have to think about it too much. And plus, um, you know, good triumphs over evil in the end. What do I mean? Well, you remember the parable, the King Jesus comes at the end of time, and the good are put on the right, and the bad are put on the left, and uh, the good are um, praised, and they go off to uh, their eternal reward, and the bad are, uh, well, they're castigated, um, they're told off, and then they go off to their just deserts. 
Good triumphs over evil. All's well that ends well. And there's a part of me that longs for that kind of certainty, that kind of, uh, you know, simple answer. It'll all be all right in the end, and God will judge between us. And the best thing about it, and I think why I love this, uh, this gospel reading in one way, is because I know, really deep down, that I'll be in with the sheep. I will be in with the sheep, of course. I love this gospel reading because it is simple and clear. But on the other hand, I really struggle with this reading because... Well, mainly because of the kind of picture that it paints of God. It paints God, it paints Jesus as a judge. And I don't know, I have a hard time reconciling the image of God that Jesus uh, presents as God as all loving and gentle and the one who loves his, her sheep, the one who tenderly created all of us, I have a really hard time reconciling that image of God, which I think is so clearly part of the message of Jesus, and this idea that then God would send off a whole bunch of God's creation to eternal punishment. I have a really hard time reconciling those two things, and I really push And I sort of push back against God and and I say, is that the way you see us? Um, Is that the way we're going to be treated in the end? Well, on further reflection, on further reflection, I think that that simplistic reading of the gospel is just that. It's simplistic. Uh, And actually, in my humble opinion, I I think it misses the point of the gospel reading completely. What is the meaning of the gospel reading? Well, here's my interpretation, and make of it what you will. So, in part, Jesus uses, um, what's the word, flowery imagery, because um, here he paints the picture of himself turning up with the angels and the archangels and all the saints and company of heaven. And so, of course, he's, <clears throat> you know, got to brush off his speech and, uh, and appear as if he is in charge. And uh, so here you have this uh, sort of flowery p- pronouncement about the good and the bad. But here's the thing. Most of us are good and bad mixed together, aren't we? Well, I can only speak for myself, and I know that, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of a sheep goat, really. Uh, I'm certainly not a sheep, and I don't think I'm entirely a goat. Um, I'm sort of a hybrid. Both of those things mixed up within me, and I don't know how Jesus would separate, separate out my DNA one strand at a time uh, to make me, yeah, completely pure, And I don't think this reading is about judgment. I think it's more a statement of fact. Because here's the thing. What Jesus is saying is that what we do in everyday life, and here it really is, what we do and what we say and how we act and how we are, the opinions that we express, the decisions that we make, the kind of relationships that we have with others or don't have with others, the way we see other people, the way we treat other people, that creates a reality not only for ourselves, but it influences the reality of people around us. And then exponentially, you know, as the ripples of our influence go out. So uh, who we are in the world has a profound effect on the world around us. And we very much, I think, create the world around us. And what Jesus is saying is, if we try to simply follow the law, which is the tradition, which is to love our neighbors as ourselves, to treat others as we would want to be treated, uh, to see our, our neighbors and our friends and strangers as beloved children of God, as we are as we think of ourselves, 
then we create the kingdom of God. We actually step into the kingdom of God right here and now, and we illumine the path. We illumine the kingdom of God to the people around us. That's it. Statement of fact. Conversely, if we, if we are consumed by fear, uh, which leads on to a greed and selfishness, and it's all about me, and I don't have enough, and what's going to happen tomorrow, and I need to control and manipulate others so that they feed uh, my own fragile ego, uh, or that I think it's okay to take from others or um, push others aside, whatever it is, then really what have we done? I suggest to you that what we have done is we've created a little hell uh, right inside our heads. And more than that, the fear and the, um, the anxiety and the lies and the manipulation and the power games of that hell ripple out into the world around us uh, to people whom we supposedly love, to uh, friends and strangers alike. And it leads us to see others, particularly those who are different from ourselves, with contempt or less than. And yeah, so we create this little hell all for ourselves. And what Jesus is saying here is that that is not God's vision, that um, that is not the kingdom of God. And it doesn't matter how many times you come to church or say your prayers, if you are in this place of little hell for yourselves, that is not the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of God. So the call, dear friends, for you and I, this feast of Christ the King, is to indeed follow Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our gentle Lord, our gracious Lord, the one who calls each of us by name and knows us and loves us, as we get ready for Advent, is just to think about the kind of world that we are right now creating for ourselves, right inside our heads. Is it all about me, or is it about others, with me included? Am I, are my decisions really um, directed and pushed by fear and anxiety and a need to control? Or are my decisions based on love and gentleness and kindness and generosity? Jesus has led the way, not with pomp and circumstance and power and grandiosity, uh, but in humility, with bare feet, with nothing in his pocket. And he simply says, dear friends, follow me and walk with me and be in the kingdom of God today. Shall we affirm our faith together, saying words from the ancient church, the Apostles' Creed, found on page four in our worship bulletins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Through baptism, we have been raised with Christ, ordained to a royal priesthood, and made citizens in a holy nation. As faithful priests, serving the King of kings, 
Let us intercede for all the world, saying, In the name of Jesus our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Sovereign Majesty, as your humble priests, we pray for all your children who do not confess you as Lord. Enable us to live the good news authentically, that all may inherit life eternal in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, our King. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, ruler of all nations, cause the leaders of nations to recognize your sovereignty and to accept your gracious rule. Make them proponents of peace and lovers of justice. Crown each ruler with compassion that all peoples may live in peace. In the name of Jesus, our King. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, merciful monarch, look with pity on all who suffer, those with incurable disease, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, the hungry, those without shelter, those who live without hope. Direct us toward them, that their royalty may be reclaimed and their lives celebrate your grace. In the name of Jesus, our King. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, Lord of all the church, we pray for your holy Catholic Church on earth. Gather all who bear the name of Christ into one vigorous, fruitful community of faith that the world may see one King of glory and one kingdom of grace. In the name of Jesus, our King. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, benevolent judge, we pray for all your people gathered here to seek your grace. By your mercy, prepare us for the day of judgment, that we may accept it as a rich and royal gift for the eternal pleasure of the faithful. In the name of Jesus, our King. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. And in a moment of stillness, we lift to God the prayers and needs of our own hearts and lives. Grant these petitions, O God, according to your perfect will, that your holy name may be praised and proclaimed until that day when all the faithful shall gather before your throne in heaven through the merits of Christ the King. Amen. Beloved, May the peace of our Lord Jesus, our King, be with you always. And also with you. Be you.
We're now on page five of our worship bulletins. May this Holy Eucharist be a foretaste of the joy of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us and prays with us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, though we are many. We are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. The body of Christ given for us. blood of Christ shed for us.
at the bottom of page seven in our worship booklets. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the sun of peace to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and touch all whom you love and pray for this day and for all days. Amen. Just to remind you to uh, look at your Wednesday emails every week. If you don't receive the church Wednesday email and you would like to, uh, please call or email uh, the parish office. Laura is there or myself, and we will make sure you are put on the list uh, because that uh, usually has details of all that's going on in and around Good Sam in the coming weeks. I would like to remind you that we'll be beginning our Advent study um, uh, a week on Sunday. That will take the place of coffee hour. Uh, and it is a, um, called A Thrill of Hope and will be uh, an in-depth look at the Nativity story through some incredible provocative sacred art. So please look for that link in our Wednesday uh, email. And also, I want to wish you a very blessed and um, peace and joy-filled Thanksgiving. For many of us, we will be separated from family and friends this year uh, because of COVID, and um, that's hard. It's difficult for all of us. But wherever you are, we have much to be thankful for, and so may God's blessing be upon you this Thanksgiving and ripple into the world around you so that you are a beacon of the kingdom of God where you are. So we sing our final hymn, hymn number 460, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.